excellence 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 excellent spirit i'm just going to try and compress a message is a message of about a month into just 30 minutes to be able to and i pray god is going to use the real thing the what you need to hear to speak to you this morning in jesus name amen can you just look at your neighbor and just smile smile you don't know what that would do to somebody just smile if the person is not smiling, pinch the person. Smile. Smile. Amen. All right. Help me with, um, I like to start every message from the beginning. And the beginning is where? Genesis. So let's read the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3. If you can put it on the screen so that we can save some time. Thank you. Thank you. It makes a difference. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without what? I want you to read with me so that I can know that it's an all inclusive service. And the earth was without what? Form and void. And darkness was where? And then. The Spirit of God was doing what? Boring. Was what? Boring. Another word said it was brooding over the face of the deep. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. The next verse. And God saw the light that it was what? And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called the night. So the evening and the morning was what? The first day. Let's quickly go to the next verse. Then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus, God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. It looks like tautology, but it has meaning, but not for today. And it was so. Let's go on. And God called the firmament heaven, so the beginning and the morning were the second day. Just go to the last verse, if you can. Fast forward. The last verse. Verse 30, I believe. 31. Then God saw everything. Can we read that together? God saw everything that he has made. And indeed, it was very good. <laughs> God saw everything that he has made. And he, indeed, they were what? Very good. Praise the Lord. Everything that he made was very good. He looked back at everything that he made and said, wow. Wow. Including you. I say, including you. Including you are not a biological error. You are not a sexual accident. You are a creature of destiny. He took time to make you. And when he finished making you, he said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So look at you and say, I'm very good. So if God made you very good or excellent, then you are excellent. Who made you? How? Excellent. So, if God made you, ex he made the sun excellent, very good. The stars, very good. And said, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. Look, you cannot give what you don't have. If God made everything excellently well, that means he's an excellent God. He can only produce things of his own kind. And say, let us make man in our own excellent image. And let him have our own excellent likeness. And God made us excellently well. Praise the Lord. So there's no doubt that I'm an excellent being. So for me to manifest excellence, 
I only need to live from the point of my identity. If you follow me very well, my message is all about identity. Once you know who you are, that settles everything. Living from your divinity, from your divine side, will produce excellence. If you live out of your divine side, yeah, you produce something less than excellence. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the deep. If you look at the scripture very well, it said in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void. It wasn't God that created the head that was without form and void. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. Between verse 1 and verse 2, there's, there's a generation that's the gap theory. And when the devil had war in heaven and he was cast into the head, it destroyed what God has created. And it became, the head became full of darkness, void. And then something happened. The Spirit of God came. And it was begin to, began to move over the face of the deep. And when the Spirit of God came, the voice followed. And God spoke. And things became recreated. The same Spirit, when it came into your life, it did not amend your life. It did not panabit your life. It recreated your life. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. God is not in the business of refurbishment. He doesn't refurb, he recreates it to become excellent and make it better than what it was before. Every time you see in the Bible that God is doing something again, it's always a better version. He said, The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. When the devil messed up with Job, when God was going to come back to him, the blessing was doubled. When the temple was destroyed, the people that saw the temple in his own glory, he said, the glory of this temple is far, far, far exceed. See, when God does something, he must improve on it. It's always an upgrade. Praise the Lord. So when the Spirit of God came into your life, it changed you completely. You are a new species that never existed before. Praise the Lord. And that is who God is. And that same spirit was what was at work in the life of Jesus. Even before Jesus, if you look at all the people in the Bible, it's the same spirit. It talked about Abel, which was the first person where excellence was mentioned in the Bible. It said, and Abel gave a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It did something far, far better in quality, in quantity, in size. It did something that was necessary for the sacrifice. And God accounted him, and his name came in the hall, hall of fame. Praise the Lord. Enoch walked with God excellently, and God did what? Took him. You are too excellent to walk with those low people. Just come. And when Jesus came into the scene, the same spirit came upon him. I want to read one scripture. It's in the book of Mark chapter 7, verse 37. If you can have it in an amplified version, the classic version. Mark 7, 37. Amplified. The classic amplified version. Yeah. And they were overwhelmingly astonished, saying, He has done everything how? Excellent. Who? They are talking about Jesus. Commendably and nobly, and even makes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He did everything excellently well. Why? Because he also had the spirit that was at work at creation, which is that spirit of excellence. Excellently well. How was he able to do things excellently well? Because he had to resemble his father. He carried the spirit of his father. You know what he said? 
said the son cannot do nothing of himself. What I see the father do, that I do. What I hear him say, that I say. When you are in the business of doing exactly what God is saying you should do, the outcome will be excellent. Do you understand what I'm saying? When God gives you an instruction and you carry out the instruction according to the pattern that was shown to you, then the result must be excellent. Because before he gave you the instruction, he has finished it. Your, he said, God can do everything. Tell your neighbor, God can do everything. But he delights in partnership. So he can do it by himself, but he chose to partner with you. So before he hands it over to you to go and do this, he has finished it. Yours is just going to bring to manifestation what God has finished in the spirit. And if God has finished in the spirit, it's excellent. Praise the Lord. So, so when you are in the business of carrying out instruction according to the letter, that was what Pastor Clay was te te teaching us on Friday. According to the word, it must come out excellently well. Praise the Lord. The spirit of excellence. That's what makes the difference. It describes a man, it makes the man resemble God. So that everything that comes out of you is good and perfect. Why? Because you're doing it according to instruction. Praise the Lord. He's a creative spirit. He has creative ability. He's a driving spirit. Pushes you to achieve the best. Always wanting to get the best. Competing with yourself and not with anybody. Trying to better your best. I agree that yes, there, there's an excellence that we can talk about outside of the excellent spirit. Which is terrestrial. Yes, people do things in excellent, excellently well because they practice it. In a secular, they, 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 they teach about it. I agree with that. But imagine you having the excellent spirit. You are not just trying to be excellent. You are excellent. They are trying to be excellent. They are striving to be excellent. They are striving to be perfect. You are not striving to be You are perfect because you are made by a perfect God. So you don't struggle to become it. You just be it. You don't struggle. You don't try. You know, I said, the, the devil is like a roaring lion. He's like, he's not a roaring lion. The only lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So, you are not trying to become excellent. You are excellent. And you are just being yourself. That's your identity. If you can live from the position of your identity, listen to me. It's easy for us to say, is anybody righteous here? He said, by faith, I'm what? Righteous. Why? Because that is the nature of God. And when you give your life to Christ, he gave you his righteousness. So we are what? Righteous. If I ask you, how many of you are holy here? Even though you know that you have messed up yesterday, you know you are holy. Not because of what you did yesterday, but because you have received his holiness. And by nature, you are holy. First Peter chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. He said that by this we have, bec we have become the partaker of the nature of God. Let's go to that scripture as I continue. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 to 8. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 to 8. said grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to what? Life and godliness. Th through the knowledge of him who has called us into glory and what virtue in the amplifier said who through the knowledge of him who has called us into glory and excellence so our calling is a calling to excellence glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through this you might be partakers of his divine nature we have become partakers 
of his divine nature. What is his divine nature? He's holy. He's righteous. He's excellent. So if I'm a partaker of that nature, that means I am holy, I am righteous, and I am what? Excellent. Tell anyone, I am holy, I am righteous, I am excellent. Say it again, say I'm holy, I am righteous, I am excellent. So if I say I'm just, I'm righteous because my God is righteous, I'm holy because my God is holy, but excellent, I don't know. Then you are living less than who you are. Because you're not partaking in all of his divine nature. But you have become a partaker. What does it mean to be a partaker? I'm sharing in his nature. I have his nature. Why? Because his spirit is in me. Praise the Lord. Am I making sense this morning? Now, let me just read the scripture so that we can just take it up from there. We are partakers of his divine nature. Verse 5. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, had to your faith, virtue. Another one, another version called excellence. To excellence, add knowledge. Knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be rather, you will not be rather barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to show you some characteristics of excellent-minded people. Number one. They are lovers of God. They what? They love God. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 9, it said, I pray that my love will yet abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that I may approve only the things that are excellent. Philippians chapter 1 verse, verse 9. I pray that my love will continue to increase yet more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. That I may approve only the things that are excellent. That means if I'm increasing in the love, I'm increasing in my excellence. Listen to me. Excellence is not a destination. There's no excellence bus stop. Only in Lagos. <laughs> it's a journey. Tell anybody it's a journey. It's a journey. Because yesterday's excellence is today's mediocrity. How many of you want to buy a new car today? Which one will you buy? Won't you buy a better version? Won't you buy an upgrade? Oh, I like clutch. You know, I was talking to Pastor yesterday. He's just a very, very strange man. We're talking about, uh, I was looking at his car and I was, he was pressing the button of, the, of his handbrake. I said, ah, gone are those days when you want to press handbrake after you do everything. Yeah. If you're not careful, you break it. Bah. <laughs> And he said he was going to buy a car like that. I said, for what? <laughs> for what? I beg. Mechanica. Classic. Classic. <laughs> All right. You go for an upgrade. So excellence is progressive. Excellence is dynamic. It keeps changing. You don't stay in one place. So people that are excellent minded, they are lovers of God. They love God. You see it in the life of Joseph, in the life of Daniel. Joseph said, when and the favor of God rests on him and the favor attracted temptation, he said, why will I do this against who? My God. So the object of his reverence was not the master, but who? The God that he loves. Daniel. When the king made a decree that nobody should pray, he said, for where? I got to pray to my God. He opened up his windows and he prayed. Why? Because my first allegiance is to my God. No wonder they both displayed excellence in every of their dealings. There are two names that are permanently in the hallmark, in the hall of fame of excellent people. In the Bible. So you want to exhibit excellence. Let the love of God increase in your life. Continue to increase in your love of God. He said that I pray that it was Paul that was praying for the Philippians. He said, I pray that your love will continue to increase more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. So that you'll be able to approve, accept, 
Only the things that are excellent. That means when your love is on the increase, as a matter of fact, there's a relationship between love. I was doing a write up on a relationship between love and excellence. If you look at the book of First Corinthians, when he was talking about the uh, when he was talking about the gift gift of the spirit in verse 12, and the last one said, "Now I show you a more excellent way." Then the next verse said, "If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, and I don't have love." When your love for God, your passion for God is on the increase, you cannot produce nothing but excellence. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we think that you're, you're, in, you're in some areas of your life, you're not, there's nothing in your marriage or in your academies. Refire your love for God. Refire for God. Then you see the product. Praise the Lord. Number two, they walk by faith. They walk by faith. I told you about Abel. He said, Abel by faith gave a more excellent sacrifice. By faith. There are men of faith. That's in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. He gave a more excellent sacrifice. Noah built an excellent ark according to God's instruction. Which was contrary to what people were saying in those days. Moses, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. There are people of faith. There are people that you'll find in the book of Hebrews. By faith, they operate in excellence. I said, the just shall live by faith. Your life might not look as if it is excellent, but by faith, I am excellently needy. Amen. You begin to say it, begin to confess it, begin to speak it into your life. I'm a product of an excellent God. Why should I not be excellent? A lion give birth to a lion. A tiger gives back to a tiger. If God is my father, tell your neighbor, if God is your father. Is Tap your neighbor, come say, if God is your father. Is your father. Tap your neighbor, say, if God is your father. Is your father. Are, you sure? Are you sure? So if God is excellent, is excellent. You, are excellent. you are excellent. Please let me shake hands with the person. Your excellence is ah. oh, Praise the Lord. Number three. They are purpose-driven people. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, and Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion. Excellent spirit-minded individuals are given to purpose. They are driven by purpose. They don't just do things because everybody is doing it. They don't follow the band who are gone. That everybody is doing it doesn't make it right. That's one of the reasons why they say, Pastor Pilecon is, is mean. Because it comes with some string. Because everybody is doing it, you just, you just stand out. At times when it comes with those kind of um, ideologies, I say, okay, wait. I, I can't join you now. Maybe when I get it, I will join you. Praise the Lord. But over the years, I've realized that when he stands out in such situation, at the end of the day, he becomes justified. Excellent-minded people don't just do things anyhow. They don't settle for less. They don't lower their standard. Because when you lower your standard, you continue to lower your, when you lower your standard to attain it, you will continue to lower your standard to maintain it. When you compromise to attain, you will compromise to maintain. They don't do things anyhow. It's for a purpose. When you see them in church, they come in church with a purpose to receive. And to serve. To give and to receive. Give yourself, give their life, give their money, and to receive the blessings from God. They are not moved by sentiments. They do things by purpose. I want you to determine today and live a purpose driven life. Don't buy a car because everybody's buying that kind of car. Don't try to be like anybody. You only remain a photocopy. You cannot be like, I can never be like Pastor Lekon. I can never speak like him. As much as I admire the way he speaks. I cannot, this is my Yoruba accent, you, can, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> I have some trainers in church, they've been trying to coach me how to speak, how to speak something. I said, okay, I'll try. But I can't be like some people. I must be myself. My accent, my stature, everything is for a purpose. Yeah. I cannot be as tall as Pastor Lico. 
Because there are some places I will enter, I will not be able to enter. Yeah. Come on, clap for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there are some things you will be able to touch, I won't be able to touch. I will need him. Bros, please help me. If you are brief, it's for a purpose. And you are tall, it's for a purpose. If you are endowed, it's for a purpose. So don't let anybody put you down and make you feel less of yourself. My endowment is for a purpose. When I move, everything moves. Ah, when you see somebody that is big, you go clear away. <laughs> Unconsciously, you just remove the chair. <laughs> because if it's somebody that is like passion, you know, okay, you manage. But when you see somebody that is heavily endowed, well, before you move, you help him to move the chair. It's for a purpose. Say it's for a purpose. Say it's for a purpose. Number four, they always had value. They always had value. Matthew chapter 25, verse 16. We see the story of the three guys that was given talents. One was given five, one was given three, and one was given one. The one that was given five went immediately to trade with what? With it. The one that was given two went also to trade with it, and they doubled it. Excellent-minded people had value to things. When you give them a task to do, by the time they submit the assignment, you think that is another assignment that they're doing. <coughs> when you give them a department to lead in church, they will lead the department, even you will be envious. Everything you put in their hand changes. You see it in the life of Joseph. Everything Potiphar kept in his hand, he added value to it. To the point that Potiphar said, everything, just manage everything. The only thing he didn't give him is his wife, so that he doesn't add value to it. Mm. Perhaps if you have given him his wife, he will have added value to the wife too. Praise the Lord. They had value to things. Things don't rem they, they had value to their lives. They will never be stagnated. That the ones, they keep improving. They keep reading. They keep looking for ways of improving. See, the greatest improvement life in life is self-improvement. Yes. Tell me my time is almost up. Always adding value. They are always prepared. Matthew 25. The wise virgins. Five of them were wise. Five of them, the Bible says they were foolish. When the master came, they began, they began to beg for help. See, excellent-minded people, they prepare for opportunities. When opportunity collides with preparation, that is what they call manifestation. Preparation does not mean you don't have faith. When I was looking for a job some time ago, I was highly frustrated. He, knew, he knows that job I was in. They were paying me about 5000 10000 per month then. And I was so frustrated. And I went on leave for one week from my place of work. And that week, a friend of mine said I should help him to go and buy something somewhere. And on my way coming, I went to show him those, the stuff he asked me to buy. And he said to me, oh my God, I forgot to tell you. There's going to be an interview in this company this week. And are, today is the last day of submission of CV. If only I'd known, I would have told you since morning to bring your CV. I said, don't worry, I have it here. Am I the one not looking for a job? Yes. Everywhere I go, I carry my CV. You know, people call me, call me and say, I'm, I'm looking for a job. I say, how many people have you given your CV? No, sir. The more CV you spread out, the more likely would that you get a job. Yes, I told him, I have my CV with me, no. with joy. I pulled it out for him. <laughs> I gave him the CV. Listen to me. I gave it to him on Wednesday. He submitted my CV on Wednesday. They called me for interview on Friday. I started a new job on Monday. Wow. Zig Ziglar said, every day opportunities are coming your way and they are passing you by. You need to seize it. Praise the Lord. In 2004, I needed to change my job again. So I went for another interview, a bigger interview now, the job I'm still in now. 
You know, and we went for that interview. We were three in that interview. And uh, I didn't know anybody in that company. The first guy has a good relationship with the HR manager. The second guy had a good relationship with what was it, maybe the accountant. The third guy, who is me, had a relationship with nobody. But with who? God. So when we got there, they have staged it in such a way that the first guy that had a good relationship with the HR manager was the first person. I was the second person, then there's a lady, the third person. So the personnel manager came out, okay, you guys are here, blah, 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 okay, fantastic. Can we have your credentials, please? And the guy said, the credential. I submitted it yesterday. Oh, didn't you know you're supposed to come with a set of copies? He said, oh, I didn't come with it. Can I quickly go and get it? He said, go and get it. Then he turned to me, next, can we have your credentials, please? How many copies? <laughs> How many copies do you want? <laughs> that was how I became the first Ooh. to attend the interview. And after I attended the interview, the lady whose department was looking for, who had the hope, was also at the interview. And after the interview, she said, I think I've found the person I want. Mm. So the other interviews were just formalities. Wow. Mm. Right there, and then she took me straight. We went to the GM, started with the GM. I spoke with the GM. We sealed it. You are still having an interview downstairs. Mm opportunities. Mm. Excellent minded people. I'm not saying this because so that you can look me like an excellent person. Of course I'm an excellent person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because my God is excellent and I have the excellent spirit of God working in me. Yes. He tells me what to do part time. Yes. I tell you what, as I close, the lady said to me after a while that one of the things that endeared me to you when you came into that interview was your shirt and tie. Even before you open your mouth to speak, your Yorubalized English. <laughs> <laughs> and that day before I left the house, man of God, I said, Lord, what should I wear? I said, put on that white shirt and that striped blue tie, and I put it on. And that was the only thing that she saw. See, the moment she saw it, I said, I think I have because she was looking for a commercial man manager. I said, I think I have the person I want. Praise the Lord. Amen. How did I do that? Because I had the excellent spirit of God in me. Jesus said, he said, he said the spirit is on me. He said, he, he, was never, he himself knew what to do. When you carry that spirit and you activate that spirit in your life and you're in tune with that spirit, you will never be confused. You will know what to do. There will always be a wisdom for that situation by the Spirit of God. Come for a landing so that you will invite me again. He doesn't have a choice. Always be prepared. Prepare for opportunities. Opportunities don't announce themselves. They just come. You are trusting God for your husband. Prepare yourself. So that when the husband comes, you not think that he's a boyfriend. You're trusting God for a wife. Prepare yourself. Even God said, prepare yourself, O Israel, before you meet your God. And we don't want to prepare. prepare. Preparation is not lack of faith. It's an act of excellence. Praise the Lord. I'll say this last one, then I'll leave the rest. I have about 15. Maybe I'll just mention them. Number seven, they are fearless and courageous people. Like Joshua and Caleb. Where everybody see problems, they see opportunities. They are solution centers. Ah, when you have those kind of people in church, you go and sleep like a pastor. They are fearless. They can take on anything. Nothing intimidates them. You know what they said about Joshua and Caleb? said they had a different spirit. Numbers 24, 14. They had what? Numbers 14, 24. They had a different spirit. That different spirit is the spirit of excellence. When we're going to describe Daniel, the king wanted to describe Daniel because for lack of words, he said he had the spirit of the gods. You know why I said that? Because the thing that this guy is producing, only the gods can manifest like this. 
This is not terrestrial. It is celestial. Hallelujah. This is not earthly. It is heavenly. It's not earthly excellence. It's an heavenly excellence with a flaw. So he just said he had the spirit of the gods. The spirit of excellence was found in this Daniel. Joshua and Caleb, they had a different spirit. Listen to me. They, with the other 10 people, went together to spy the land. They saw the same thing. They both saw the Anakites. They both saw the giants. They saw the fruits. They, saw, they even said, we saw that the land was full of milk and honey. But excellent people see beyond what every other person sees. They saw obstacles. But excellent-minded people saw opportunity to be elevated. They saw problems, but they saw solutions. He said, let us go at once and take the land. Why? Because God has spoken to them that they were going to take the land. You know what I was doing? I was saying, but God told them that when you get to the land, the land will be flowing with milk and honey. And they saw that they believed that. God told them they would see grapes in the land. They saw that and they believed that. So how come were they not be able to believe that God has given them the land? When he said, I have given you the land. Just go in and possess it. Very courageous. Be bold and very courageous. Don't let anything intimidate you. I'm going to just read the rest and we'll close. They are very creative. They have a very creative mind, just like Jacob. Overnight, he became a breeder. And he created, he created animals. Very creative. They are diligent and faithful people. They are very proactive people. Before you think they are thinking for you already. They do things differently. They don't run away from challenges. They are always determined to succeed. They are solution centers. They are leaders of leaders. They have strong values. And will never, never compromise the standard. Those are the attributes of excellent minded people. And that is who you are. That's who God has made you. The fact that you are not manifesting it now doesn't mean that you are not it. So you need to begin to speak to yourself and begin to activate it. And I want you to rise to your feet now. That is who God has made you, an excellent person. Believe it, receive it, accept it, and begin to confess it, and begin to live it. The more you say it, the more you be it. I am righteous, I am righteous, I am righteous, and you become righteous. I'm holy, I'm holy, I'm holy. So begin to say, I am excellent, I'm excellent, I'm excellent. The excellent spirit of God is in me. Let me put that scripture on the screen as I close. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. Let's use that as a prayer. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I am an excellent being, created by an excellent God, and I produce excellent things. My harvest is excellent. Come and say, and this I pray, that my love will abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that I may approve only the things that are excellent. That I may be sincere and be without offense till the day of Christ. Fear with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, unto the glory and the praise of God. In Jesus' name. Let's say it say, and this I pray. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Say, and this I pray. That my love for God, for the things of God, for the work of God, for the people of God, will continue to increase more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that I may approve only the things that are excellent, that I may be sincere and be without offense till the day of Christ, filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, unto the glory and the praise of God. In Jesus' precious name.